What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping. It is Saturday night, and we're doing our Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping. Tonight's beverage of choice is an old fashioned. That is refreshing. That is actually an old fashioned with Elijah Craig. If you guys watch the channel, you know I'm a big fan of Elijah Craig bourbon. It's a good sipper if you just want to drink it straight, but it also mixes in well in your old fashions in Manhattans. And it's a good medium shelf bourbon, good price tag, and it's got a really good flavor to it. So if you're a bourbon drinker, check it out. So tonight's video, I completely forgot that I told you guys I would do a video on my freshwater tank. I have just spaced out. But I've also had uh, two of the subscribers have asked me some questions about some particular things that I've done with my tank. So I'm going to show those real quick um, on the 120 and on the Fluval M90 and then show you guys the freshwater tank. Uh, and then I'm going to hop off here because, you know, it's Saturday night and uh, we're adventures and drunk fish keeping. So to start off, the first question was asked is how did I mount my hydras to a rimmed tank? Which is a good question because when I got these, I realized that these were set up especially for rimless tanks. Um, so... The tank I have is an Oceanic. Now, if anyone's familiar, been in the hobby for a while, an Oceanic is basically what the what a Red Sea, what a Mr. Aqua today, uh, you know, the really high-end tanks was 10, 12 years ago. Um, Oceanic doesn't do as much with the tanks nowadays, but it's a good tank. Um, they're, in this case in point, if I've ever showed you guys, this is the thickness of the glass on a 120. And you can see the silicone is a little rough on it, but still, it's it's thick glass. It's it's not going to leak anytime soon. So another thing is the ridge on this thing is also insanely thick. Now it's got this kind of plasticky wood style veneer here, and you've got this inner plastic lip to set a lid on top of. So how do you do a rimless? Well, here's how you do a rimless on one of these. You basically have to hold this thing up and mount it. Is tight as you can get it. And you can see I still got some play as you can see it moving. I got some play in this. That's as tight as I want to go with it because I did put some indentions in here. As you can see there is some indention where these two feet come over. The problem with this if you've got a rim if you got a rimless tank it's not so much a problem with the rim tank. You got these teeny tiny set screws and the head is not much bigger than this where it mounts to the back side so what the subscriber that actually asked me this question did something ingenious he used the flat part of a coral plug to put in here that's amazing i didn't even think of that when i put these on there and now that i've actually you know he responded back to me on that i was thinking well that's a great idea i wish i'd have done that so there you go what ingenuity will come into uh so Props to you, you know who you are, because I was just talking to you on the channel the other day, but that is a great idea. So if you get these particular hydras, and you get these hard gooseneck mounts, don't be afraid to put them on a rim tank. You can do it. It just takes a little bit of finagling and a little bit of modification, and they'll fit right up. Um, or the other thing is, if you've got the right setup, Hydra does make, uh, basically with this kind of claw foot design, with this upright with a straight bar across that you can just kind of slide your lights into and it sits is probably what i'm going to go to next because you don't have to worry about it since it's not hanging over it's just sitting across it's probably what i'm going to go to but that's uh you know down the road because just the rail system alone is a hundred dollars when you add in the uprights you're talking you know you're talking about 130 140 dollar purchase that's a little bit pricey that's a lot of coral so the other question was asked is the drain on the M90. Now the M90, uh, got to do a clean and water change on it. And I want to show you guys that tomorrow when we get done with that because the girlfriend has gotten some really cool new mushrooms. She's had a couple split. Um, she's really just gotten, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the thing because it's really pretty. Um, she's gotten some really pretty new coral in here. Um, but just we just need to do a water change before we show that off. So the drain on said fluval is right here um it's kind of like an overflow setup in a sump tank the problem is you know it's got it's got a drain petcock on it it flows into the tank um here's the problem with these uh 
A lot of people who have gotten these tanks have complained that they leak, and they do right off the bat. Now we thread taped the threads going in for that reason, and we also, um, you know, put a little drip pan underneath it. It stopped leaking. I think it just had to kind of get swollen up enough to fit in there tight. And that little check bond there is kind of cheap. If it was me, if I could redo the tank, I would probably just plug that because Flugel's idea, while nice, it's not practical, is allows you to drain your back chambers. Sorry, the hiccups. Burgers and beer. America. But it basically allows you to drain this back chamber. So you don't have to expose your display to water or drain your display down if you've got corals up top, things like that. Idea, good. Execution, not so good. Um, that's probably one of the few things I've ever criticized Flugel about because I do like their products and I do like how they do their stuff. But that one was just kind of uh, a little harebrained in how they design stuff because the backflow pumps on that thing to return, the, the return pump sucks. It is so low flow. You have almost no movement on the back end and your chamber depth, or excuse me, the width of the chamber is so thin that you've got a 750 GPH pump in there. You can maybe find a slim or a taller thousand that'll fit in there. And that's about it. Um, unless you stack two pumps in there, then you gotta have two returns for two pumps or do a, you know, a T to fit into your one, you know, return. So it, it kind of makes it problematic because you don't get a lot of flow. So what happens is you have a lot of deterrence and algae and junk build up in those back chambers that's always where you siphon off like where we start when we do a water change we siphon the back almost empty then we work on the display most times you drain enough out of the back you don't have to mess with the display but you'll take probably two to three gallons out of the display by siphoning the back just as everything evens out once it gets past the little overflow slots and then you're done so the the thought process from Fluval, good execution poor if you have one of these tanks think about getting one of these tanks see one of these tanks if it was me i'd either plug that up or i would use that is i would basically if it was me and i could mm -hmm. start all over with this thing i would take that return i would take that drain and turn it into a return for a small 10 gallon sump underneath with an external pump an external hard line to pump back into the tank and pump it back into that one of those back chambers and basically have a reserve sump with one drain off for the overflow. It would work, it would look okay if you just got a nice little, you know, clear piece of plastic to hook over into those back chambers. You can make your own sump out of that. It is possible, just hadn't got around to doing it. So, on to the freshwater tank. Um, it's still refreshing. So, the freshwater. I got a cube, and it's rimless. And I'm one of those guys that got a rimless cube. Um, it's not a straight cube in the sense of it's all equal measurements. You're a little bit off. Uh, your front spread here is about 14 inches. You're running about 13 deep. You're 12 and some change deep. And you're right at about 13 tall. It's about eight gallons of water, you know, all the way full. You know, a little bit of a lip, all, you know, a little bit of a that's where I like to run it at, just to get a little bit of movement in the top with the filter. So you're probably talking about seven and some change. But, so the first video I did on this tank was just the tank in general. Um, it had a nice little light frame that went around the top here. It kind of framed it. Um, it had a one-off little touch button. It had a little, you know, small filter that sit right back in here. and sit in the tank and if you're someone who's a beginner in the hobby and you're like hey i'm just i just want to tank i just want to have a a cool little fish or two you know maybe do a beta um great if you were someone who's wanting to do like you know some substrate a little bit of decoration a rock and a beta as it stood it was great for for 50 bucks it's a great little tank for being a rimless with low iron glass um the silicone on the edges let me show you guys the silicone as you can see, I mean, it's clean. The edges are clean. You know, I mean, it's not super duper pretty. It's not belled out, but I mean, they're clean. They use black silicone to make the line. So not a bad little tank for, for 50 bucks. For a beginner into the hobby, that's great. But I wanted a really cool statement freshwater tank. And I was really kind of, um, by the way, let me introduce you guys to my newest. This is Finn. He is the newest addition to Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping. 
Um, he was somebody left this little guy out. Can you believe that? Somebody somebody left this little guy out in my neighborhood. Can't find his owners. So he's ours now. And he's running off the play. You run off the play? Can you hang out with me? Good boy. Let's see. Good puppies. Yeah. Everybody's gotta have adventures and drunk fish keeping puppy. Stop I Anyway. He's excitable. He likes to fish too. He likes to watch them. So, the cool thing uh, about this tank is you get enough room to do a couple cool small species. Um, and I did some upgrades to it, which were cheapish. Um, as far as livestock goes, I have uh, four, you know, just tetras in there, nothing crazy. One panda corianonis and one, uh, you know, beta just because it's a freshwater, it's small, why not do a beta? For the white, uh, I swapped out to a fluval. Now this is the fluval nano series. Sorry I'm blind everybody, but as you can see, insane amount of LEDs. Uh, just like the hiders, it's got an entire app control process to it, so it's a really nice setup. Um, the spread, not so much. The depth is great, so if you're someone who's going to get a desktop tank that's a little bit taller, your 8 to 10 to 12 gallon cubes, it's a perfect tank. Not going to do a widespread. If you're going to do a widespread, you're going to try to treat this like an AI Prime, you're going to have to probably get two. But not a bad light. The plants that are in here, if you guys can see, I started all these plants off and they're all an inch tall. Uh, glued them straight up to the rock, and this is what we've got with a month's time with no fertilizer and no CO2 addition, just straight light using natural, you know, fish waste as fertilizer and whatever food particle is left over. So not bad growth. Well, I have to probably add a little CO2 here and there, sure, but not bad in general. Um, for the filtration, did completely change the filtration up. Went with the deep blue, um, which this is just like any other kind of decent hang on the back system. Uh, there's set up for a cartridge here, you know, foam. I actually put a bag of carbon and a bag of ceramic bio in there. And that is actually rated for a 15 to 20 gallon system. So if you're doing your filtration, always make sure you filter a little bit heavier than what you got. But overall, you know, $50 for the kit, put about 65 in the light put about 15 into the filter and about another 10 into it today. <clears throat> when you look into the sand substrate, the rock, the fish, I've probably got $100 in this tank total. And to me, it's a nice little freshwater tank just to give you some, you know, difference. I've got a couple of the plants I'm going to be putting in there tonight. Um, oh, by the way, so this is a white sand base. Now, I wanted a white sand base. I wanted a freshwater tank with a white sand base for a long time. Problem is white sand is super duper, and I'm gonna show you guys. If you can see, super duper fine material. You can see how fine that is. Well, normally without a good substrate like gravel or you know topsoil, it's hard to get plants to root into that. So what you do? Well, you take a rock like one of these smooth river stones, and you take this stuff, which my reef people know, reef glue. If you're in the saltwater hobby, you use this stuff all the time. It's just basically a non-toxic, safe underwater super glue to glue frag plugs to, oh, excuse me, to glue frag plugs to rock. Now, I'm gonna drop this twice. Hey, don't eat that. But that's how you glue frag plugs down. Well, you can also glue, glue freshwater plants down to rock that way. And it makes a really good way to glue it down. That's actually how I attached all the rock or all the plants to that rock um, is using super glue. Some people have done it, some people have it. If you're one of the newbies and just getting in the hobby and you're like, man, I really want to kind of do like a cool, you know, a lot of plants up a rock or up like, you know, a piece of driftwood and kind of make it look like a tree, that's how you do it. You just put a little bit of glue on it, it'll stay. Let the roots expose, it looks good. Um, Beyond that, that's about the end of the video. Um, I know it's a little bit long-winded. I just hadn't done one in a while, so I just want to show you guys some stuff. One last thing, show you guys a feeding of said saltwater tank. Um, and I know I've said I'm gonna get a tripod, and that is coming because I keep forgetting to go and buy a tripod. 
so I can mount my camera and show you guys my tank and talk without giving you all these jostly camera angles. Anyway, figured I'd show you guys what we got going on in the Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping House. If you guys like the video, please, you know, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Like I said to you guys, I'm not doing this for ad or for, you know, I'm not trying to make money off this. This is basically just me trying to put information out there for the newbies in a cool format that maybe is a little bit more uh, easy to digest. So anyway, questions, comments, put them down below in the videos. I like to respond to you guys, you know, help you guys out with stuff. Like I said, to the two people in my comments from another video that asked about stuff, like I said, I will, I will show ideas when ideas come up that are better than mine because, hey, that's part of the hobby is just showing the cool stuff and showing the cool ideas that other people have because you can't think of everything. So when someone else does something that's cool that makes sense, hey, why not? But anyway, Mission and Drug Finish Keeping. You guys have a good weekend. I'll do another video tomorrow on the 190, and uh, have a good night.